Hi everyone, Jeff here. So on today's episode of MCEP Tech Tips, I want to take a few minutes to talk about SD cards. So SD cards are really kind of a critical important thing. Um, we're starting to see the rise of SD cards for uh, onboard storage more and more each day in the automation world. Um, HMIs are now switching from, oh my gosh, what were those called? They're the old compact flash that have like 128 pins that if you bent one pin, you were screwed. Um, and you pulled those things out and like the card's like this big and you're like, what the heck is that? Um, so we switched from that kind of flash to switching over to those little SD cards. And even now we're starting to see the micro SD cards starting to come into play. Um, but one of the key things with the SD card is obviously mass storage. Um, a little better reliability than the old compact flash had. Um, and then obviously um, a little cheaper, a little easier to work with. Um, and people are familiar with them because most of your laptops now have a SD card port on them, which is kind of beneficial. Um, but with that, like I said, we're starting to see those on like vision systems um, where they're using those to store your images, your programs, all of that information. We're seeing them on HMIs where if your HMI only comes with like a two gigs of like onboard storage and you need to have like 15 different pages or whatever, now we've got to throw an SD card in there so that we enhance our storage capacity. Um, you can enhance it by tenfold or whatever. I mean, even more than that. But um, we're seeing that information going that way. Um, trying to think like some of the other systems. We're seeing PLCs, in fact. Um, in fact, the Allen Bradley PLCs are now using onboard uh, SD cards for storage of their programs. I believe even Siemens is doing it. Um, wouldn't be surprised if we're starting to see some of our frequency drives start carrying on board SD cards. One of the benefits to that is, is that we're able to pop that sucker in, save all of our memory to it, pop it out, put it into a new drive. That's one of the benefits to it. Um, not that all systems work that way, so please check your reference manual before you do that. Um, some of it's just to enhance the size of the memory of the program. It's not actually storing the whole program on board. Some of it's it's being shared amongst the two types of systems. Um, trying to think what else might come with SD cards. Right off the top of my head. but um, Those are some of your, your general main ones that are, are coming with SD cards, or at least coming with an SD card port. Um, but what I really want to discuss is, is the SD card. Um, not so much what has the port and what doesn't. So... In the automation world, we need to be careful what kind of SD card we're actually using inside of our equipment. So let's just talk an HMI or even a PLC. If you read the instruction manual, it will tell you it has to be an industrial grade SD card. And you're thinking to yourself like, well, what does that matter? It's like, okay, so it has to be an SD card, but it has to be an industrial grade. Then you go on their little website and you're like, whoa! It's a $100 SD card. I can go down to Target or Walmart and buy an SD card for 20 bucks, And that's got 128 gigs on it or something like that. Maybe it's only 64. I don't remember. And then it's like, okay, well, I'm standing here at the, the Target store, and I'm looking, or Walmart, or wherever you go to your local store. And you're like, okay, so you've got this one that says SD card. Then you got this one over here that says like extreme SD card. Or then you got this one that says like copper coated some phenomenal whatever that even means. And then you're flipping over and you're like, oh, well, it's rated for this temperature and this many images and this many read writes and all that stuff. And you're like, I don't know what any of that means, but whatever. Sounds cool. That's the one I'm going to buy. I'm going to shove that in my HMI and you're going to be there for six weeks and then... All of a sudden, the program's gone, and you're scrambling to put the new program back on there, and you're also running down to your local store again to buy a new SD card. Why? Because you didn't put an industrial-grade SD card in that thing. Okay, so here's the explanation behind industrial-grade versus buying a consumer-grade SD card. It doesn't matter whether it's extreme, copper-coated, whatever the heck that is. Okay, yeah, it's cool. It allows up to 10,000 read writes, all that phenomenally cool, awesome stuff that you saw at the store. None of that really matters. The industrial grade is rated to handle that constant read write that it needs to have for that information to be pulled and stored 
that that PLC, that HMI, whatever component it's into, needs. On top of that, it's rated for the ambient heat or cold that is needed to run your system. So you'll have two different grades when it comes to like temperature ratings. You can have a low temperature rating and you can have a really high temperature rating. In a general understanding, they're generally rated to go down to zero degrees and they're generally rated to go up to about 100 degrees ambient temperature. Give or take on that, check your manufacturer spec sheet before you buy it. So the industrial SD card is rated for two things, ambient temperatures and the constant read write that's needed for the function. There's your main difference. Now, here's the next problem you're going to run into when you get an industrial SD card. You're going to see three terms. And I just recently found out about the third term. You're going to see SLC, MLC, and TLC. SLC stands for single level cell. MLC is going to stand for multi-level cell. And there you have it, TLC, triple level cell. I'm not going to talk too much about the triple level cell because all it is is basically a doubling of what the multi-level cell is. So I'm going to spend most of my time talking about the single level cell and the multi-level cell. So what does that really mean? Well, it goes really deeper into the understanding of the electronics components behind it. It's the NAND technology of the solid state memory. It's how the memory is stored within the bits, and then the bits are stored within the cell that's inside of the memory card. And again, I'm not going to get too deep into this because it's not something that I'm going to spend all day discussing. But you take the single level cell, and all it's doing basically is storing that bit per cell. And I believe it's like two bits per cell because it's the, how it splits the cells and stuff. What that really allows for in your real understanding terms is in a single level cell, it allows for less quality of memory allocation per component. So that chip is only going to store X amount of bits versus in the multi-level cell, that chip is going to store twice as many bits that the single level cell stored. And in the triple level cell, obviously it's going to double what that was. So your memory allocation per chip size is obviously your single level cells here, your multi-level cells way up here. Okay. But what does that really mean in memory and faster allocation and all that stuff? Because realistically, your PLC is trying to pull that and scan that sucker really fast, and so is your HMI. So which one do we really want to go with? Well, the answer to that technically is going to be, what's your application? Is your application, I just need to have mass amount of storage to throw this on? And is, all it is is a backup storage? Well, then MLC is probably the way to go, because why? It's a little cheaper than SLC because of the size of the memory allocation. But if you're constantly pulling that information and you need that information fast and rapidly, SLC is the way to go because what is the benefit of SLC? SLC has three major massive benefits. It's faster at pulling the memory allocation because it doesn't have to dig through that chip to find all of those, it's right there, it's only one. It's robust. It's kind of been around a little longer than the MLC. So it's highly robust. Um, and its longevity is way out there. So it can read write longer. It can last longer. Um, and then it's again, has to deal with that ambient temperature and the read write ability. Again, though, it goes back to what's your application, but SLC is also going to cost you more than MLC is, for instance. Um, and it's just because of the size, the data allocation, and how it's storing it. Um, I do want to take the time to probably show you two little examples here that I have. Now, I don't necessarily 
condone or condemn the brand. Um, I just happen to, I mean, obviously I have an SLC in it right here, and then I have an MLC on this side. Um, the brand happened to be what my vendor was able to provide me with when I needed it. I was in a little bit of a, of a time crunch to get what I needed ASAP. So I ordered one of each and got them there. Um, I, again, I neither condemn nor condone um, the brand. And I'm very, very thankful that <laughs> they exist. And I'm extremely thankful that my vendor was able to get them to me as quickly as they could. Um, because I happened to be down at the time that I needed that component. Um, so one of the things there is you're going to see is that there's really no difference in the look. They're literally, they look the same. They hold the same. They do the same thing. But they don't function the same way inside. Um, so a lot of applications you're going to read about, you're going to see about, need that quick allocation of that memory. And so you're going to notice that they're going to require an SLC. And then there's going to be some things like maybe a camera system where they're just storing images on it. And you're going to say, okay, well, we need an industrial grade, but we can deal with an MLC because we, we can store twice as much information at a little bit cheaper cost. So maybe like a vision system might use like a, an MLC or you might see like maybe a, a laser control system. I've seen that before where they have a laser control system with an SD card that holds all the information. That laser control system might be using an MLC. Um, and sometimes a manufacturer might recommend an SLC. And that's where I would suggest, like in some applications, read why they recommend that. If it's because they want to be able to quickly pull the stored information on there, maybe your application doesn't require you to pull that information as rapidly. Um, maybe your changeover requirement is, you know, five minutes. So you've got time for that sucker to go out and pull that information and bring it on. Um, but in some applications, that changeover is literally that part's right there, bing, bing, and you've got to be changed over that quickly. So that SLC is what you need for that quick change. So sometimes it doesn't hurt to reach out to technical support and ask, why do you recommend this? Um, and, and, and to get a better understanding of that. Um, in some instances, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, just you spend an extra few dollars and you buy the other grade of the SD card. Um, again, though, sometimes it's not a few dollars difference. Sometimes it's a couple hundred dollars. I will tell you an industrial grade SD card versus a consumer grade SD card is a phenomenally di massive cost difference. And you're going to wonder why you're ever buying an industrial grade SD card. But that's the reason is because of that, that speed and the robustness and obviously the functionality. And then um, obviously that ambient temperature that you have to concern yourself with. So definitely things to keep in, in, in mind when it comes to industrial grade SD cards. Um, I, that's pretty much sums up the industrial SD card. So I'm going to leave it at that. And thank you all for watching and remember to stay safe.